Hello, this is Greg Hintermeister from the Hybrid Cloud CTO office. I'd like to talk to you today about how we provision IBM Cloud Kubernetes service from IBM Cloud Private. So here we're going to open Cloud Automation Manager. We do this by going to the Helm releases, finding uh, the Helm release we use to install Cloud Automation Manager, and launch it. So from here, we're going to actually create a service composed of one or more templates. So once we're in the services, click Create Service, and then we're going to uh, give it a name and description. And then what you want to do next is uh, go up to the Composition tab. This is where you can visually compose your service, and it can get quite complicated. But for now, we're just going to search for Kubernetes template from our IBM category. And when we select it, we're going to make sure that it's pointing to our IBM Cloud account that we want to use. If you don't have one, you just go to Manage and create a cloud connection. Now from there, we're going to go to the Parameters section. And this is where you can hide or default or offer a subset of parameters to the end user that's actually going to do it. So here we're going to fill in the org that we're going to use that's in our IBM Cloud account, uh, the space. We're going to uh, let the end deployer guy uh, choose the cluster name. So we're going to create a new parameter. I'm going to give it a display name for how it will appear in the UI, and you'll see that later. And then the default value will just leave as blank. Okay, so now that that's created, we need to fill in the VLAN IDs, and those are the private and public VLAN IDs per data center. So you gotta go into the command line or the documentation I always flip to use the command line and the BX command, uh, and that'll show you the public and private VLANs. So we'll just copy those in. Okay. And so next we're going to see how many, uh, the number of worker nodes we want. Uh, the default you can choose between 1 and 10, but uh, for this one, we're going to create a parameter set where the user can choose between 2 and 5. Usually it's always good to have more than one worker node. And uh, you know, for, the, for a development environment, uh, we're going to uh, allow a, a range from between 2 and 5. So here we're, do, we're uh, doing the display name and description again. And then we're going to actually, you know, manually add each value that we're going to allow. We'll set a default, and then hit save. Okay, so that's good. Uh, now for the machine type, you know, what kind of VM in IBM Cloud do we want to use, or bare metal machine? Uh, we want to default that to, you know, it's decent, but it's, you know, four cores, 16 gig of memory, uh, and that's enough for now. Okay, so we're going to save it and, and kind of test it out. So once we've saved it, we can hit the back arrow and actually go in and view the service. Even though it's in draft mode, we're going to view it just to try it out. So we just select it. Uh, there's only one plan, so I just click Next. And sure enough, I can uh, type in a name uh, and, uh, and choose the number of worker nodes. So that's good. And I see between there's two and five. But now I also want to add uh, another plan. So this way, this way I can have one service and based on the plan, uh, I'm going to add one that has uh, 10 nodes by default and a higher end virtual machine. So we're going to go back into the composition. 
And we're going to drag this decision over because multiple plans are based on the decisions. Uh, fill in this mapped parameter. It's just the name of the, the decision here, which I'll call cluster type. And we're going to add two cases. One is kind of a, a basic cluster, and then the other one's kind of a big cluster. All right. Well, we've already added uh, a bubble for uh, for IKS for the basic cluster, so we're going to drag that into the first path, the basic cluster path, and then because of all that tedium of all those parameters, we're going to clone that so all those fields are identical uh, and customize it, and then move that back down into the big cluster. Okay, so now I have two paths. Uh, two different methods to create two different kinds of IKS clusters. So in this new one, we're going to keep a lot of the same parameters, uh, but this one we're going to default the number of worker nodes to 10. And you can always change that later on uh, in the IBM Cloud UI or command line. And then here we're going to uh, beef it up uh, to a pretty, pretty, wow, that's a pretty nice, <laughs> nice system. Uh, so when we create the plans, we're going to want to, you know, make sure that they choose wisely for that one. All right, so now we're going to create the plans. Go to the Plans tab. We're going to rename this guy to uh, the basic cluster. So this is good for all test and dev environments, and that's all, all groovy, just to give them a, a hint that they can choose the number of worker nodes. Then we're going to create a new one uh, for the other cluster, for the big cluster. Choose wisely. All right. So we're going to uh, do that. Now we got to deal with these parameters. Um, this kind of gets me every time. So what you're going to see is parameters that we need to uh, default and and just have as read only. So the cluster type is just going to reinforce that. Yep, they they chose this uh, basic cluster. You know, once they click the plan and they move into the parameters, they're just going to get re a reinforcement that it's uh, a basic cluster. Okay, and everything else is good. And then for the big cluster, uh, we want to do the same for that, but then actually default the number of workers uh, to be 10. And now um, I'll tell you, you know, you might see through this already. What, what I should have done is named these parameters uniquely. And then the, you know, the default 10 one would have shown up, num worker, you know, for big cluster, num workers for basic cluster. But that's okay. This works too. And then I can default this uh, read only for uh, for a big cluster. And save. I'm going to uh, test it one more time now. And up until this point, I can change all of it. So I I could I could delete all that and go back and and change those parameters, but but that's okay. So I'm going to test it out again. I click into this thing uh, to the service, and sure enough, I've got two plans now. That's good. I click next, and based on that basic one, I can enter a name and then choose between two and five worker nodes. A little description shows up in the eyes, uh, and that's okay. I just test out that big cluster. And then here, all I can type in is the uh, cluster name. So uh, I'll actually mention later on, but you can control access to who has access to each plan. Uh, which is good. So I'll mention that here too. So once this is ready, uh, now you're ready to publish it. Uh, so you click on the little little menu and click publish. Now you can't change it once it's published. So you know, that's why I went through and tested it out a couple times. You just you could even deploy it if you want from here uh, and not publish it. But uh, what's nice about publishing is now you've exposed just what you've enabled those end deployers to have in IBM Cloud Private. So now I'm in Cloud Private, and I go to the catalog, 
And it does take a little bit for the services to show up because this is now a brokered service. Cam is brokering a service to deploy this uh, IKS cluster. Uh, so we'll wait a little bit, do some refreshes. To be honest, it could be up to five or even 10 minutes. But sure enough, it'll come in, it'll be labeled as a service. And when I click it in, I see the two plans, uh, just like I did. You can control access to it, so only devs have access to this basic one and uh, admins have access to the big one. I'm actually gonna give it a, a name and the number of workers. That instance name on top, that's just a, a name to, for the job to run. So that's no big deal. But then the cluster name, that one's important. So I click deploy, and, and now it's actually deploying uh, the brokered service, and I can, I can track its progress. Uh, kind of rudimentary in this, but if I launch back into Cloud Automation Manager, I'm gonna get some good feedback uh, that it's in progress, including this log file, but I just love it because it's in real time and it shows every little thing it's doing. And now I have flipped to the public cloud and it sees it's deploying. So it's very quick. Uh, Greg Demo 28 is deploying. Uh, it'll, it'll take uh, you know 10 minutes or so to, to deploy and get it ready. But that's it. So uh, thanks for seeing it. Any questions, uh, give a holler. Greg Hintermeister, Hybrid Cloud CTO Office. Thanks a lot.